beautiful wedding coach and today's little video is all about the wedding dress and the history of the wedding dress, styles of wedding dress, lots of hints and tips about choosing your wedding dress. I'm going to look at bridesmaids dresses, I'm going to touch briefly on the groom's outfit but not much and yeah so hopefully you'll get lots of information about choosing wedding dresses that you'll find useful and uh, I'm wearing part of my wedding dress. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this video. Wedding dresses. So let's talk wedding dresses because that's what we all love about getting married. So Queen Victoria is credited with starting the tradition of the white wedding dress um, when she married Prince Albert in 1840. And before that brides usually wore some coloured dresses made from heavy silk or satin or their Sunday best. So Queen Victoria also set another fashion for having bridesmaids carry her train as well. So that didn't come around until Queen Victoria. Um, so while the majority of brides follow tradition with a white or ivory dress, ivory is a better shade for most skin tones than white. This one's ivory. Right there. Um, not all brides do and it's perfectly acceptable to wear a coloured dress or a trouser suit, whatever you feel, whatever suits you and suits your vibe. Um, there's so many designers and choices out there um, that it can be hard to decide what you like because there's just so much choice. Your first port of call will be a bridal shop probably um, and if you if you've researched designers and there's already a particular designer you like because um, they've all got a certain look to them so um, I favoured the theatrical sort of wedding dress um, so I was very drawn to Ian Stewart um, so I needed to find a bridal shop that stocked Ian Stewart dresses because they were the ones that I wanted to try on so yeah if there's a particular designer you'll have to find where that stockist is for that designer so that you can go there um, but obviously not all designers are stocked in all shops so um, you might find one bridal shop with a certain look of dresses and if none of them appeal to you, if you just try a different bridal shop, you might find that you love all their dresses because that's the look that they've got. So there's um, a bridal shop in Leeds City Centre. Um, I can't remember what it's called, unfortunately, but it specialises in kind of the boho style. And it's all lace and just slightly alternative looking dresses. Um, I just think they're absolutely stunning. Um, there wasn't anything like that when... I was getting married <laughs> but if it was if there was that was the sort of shop I would have gone in um, and also you've got the ones where the designer is actually um, it owns the shop so you know you can go to an actual dressmaker and get them to design and make you a dress as well so that's another option um, but yeah so you need to think about your shape you need to think about the style of your wedding day um, so if you're planning like a Gatsby themed event, a full skirted princess gown just probably wouldn't fit the look. You want something a bit more slimmer fitting, maybe 20 style, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, something glamorous and sleek really. Um, if you're planning a wedding in a field with wellies and hay bales, then probably something glittery and sequined is going to be a bit out of place. So you'd probably want to go more for a kind of a boho style. But ultimately, you know it is your choice you wear the dress that you want um, but you're unlikely to know exactly what's going to suit you and what you like until you start trying on dresses so get out there try on dresses it's great fun because you never know what will suit you because I found when I was searching for dresses I mean I loved all the fishtail figure hugging ones which is what I got in the end a nice kind of slinky well it wasn't slinky because it was all just like quite thick lace but it was it was slinky with big puddle train it was gorgeous um, but I did try on some big princess dresses or not not like huge huge I'm not talking like um, gypsy wedding style huge dresses <laughs> but um, it was like in a pale gold and had a big skirt and a gold bodice and it was gorgeous as well I was uh, quite taken by that one um, but anyway <laughs> try on all these different styles and you don't know what you're going to be attracted to and what will suit you main styles which I don't think I've actually got in front of me um, here we go, I've got this in my book, so, right, I don't know whether you can see that, so this is in my 
wedding planning book which you can buy um, so different styles of wedding dresses there so there's about five different shapes um, a-line mermaid empire ball gown and sheath um, and it also kind of shows shapes of bodies that suit <laughs> the different style of dresses so they're the main five styles and when you're trying your dress on practice sitting in it make sure you can sit down in it because obviously you'll be spending a lot of time sitting down having your meal um, so you've got to make sure it's comfortable if it is a bone to dress make sure there's no boning digging in because that's going to really hurt um, if you're getting married in a church and you're going to be kneeling practice kneeling and standing back up in it because you don't want to kind of trip over it and fall flat on your face um, and if you've got a hooped dress I don't know if people have hooped dresses these days I'm a bit out of touch with wedding fashion everything seems to be a bit more slinky um, but do be careful because if you sometimes if you kneel on the hoop the hoop at the back is going to flick up and everyone's going to see your underwear so just bear that in mind little things you need to remember um, the length of the dress normally just skims the very top of your shoes so you, your shoes poke out and it also means that when you're just walking you're not going to trip over it because your feet are just slightly underneath the dress um, and you don't want to keep hitching it up all the time while you're walking around um, think about your venue um, if it, if the venue has lots of little narrow doorways and things it's a little small and quirky um, a large dress is going to make getting through tricky um, and if you've got lots of stairs um, you're going to need to do a lot of walking around something that's a tight fishtail is going to be a bit tricky because you're not going to have to lift your knees up um, to get up and down stairs um, and I'd also add if you don't like company in the toilet with you which was one of my criteria for choosing a wedding dress can I go to the toilet on my own in it um, make sure you've got a dress that you can hitch up <laughs> and you can go on your own and if you're dancing the night away make sure you've got a dress you can dance in because you don't want to constantly be lugging this big dress or hitching it up or you know your legs are strapped together because it's so tight that you can't move so um, either get a dress you can move in or um, change into something else <laughs> um, and there is that temptation to you find a dress in a wedding dress shop a particular style and you might think oh I'll see if I can get it cheaper elsewhere and you find somewhere in China that seems to be selling the exact same dress for a fraction of the price beware if the price is too good to be true it probably is you get what you pay for um, counterfeit dresses you've got no recourse if it's damaged or if it doesn't fit um, so do make sure you buy a dress from a reputable bridal wear shop or designer so you don't get conned um, buying your wedding dress um, a good bridal shop is going to be honest with you about what suits you and what doesn't um, I mean you'll have your own style which you'll want to embrace into your bridal gown um, if you've got a quirky dress sense I'd go for a quirkier dress um, pick something that's true to you um, and also pick dresses in your budget if you've got a five or six hundred pound budget for, for wedding dresses don't go to bridal shops where all the dresses start from like two grand um, you can end up trying on something that you fall in love with that you can't afford um, but there are loads of gorgeous dresses that will be in your budget so if you stick to dress shops that specialize in that budget range you're going to find something that you like and you're not going to be tempted into choosing something that is going to break the bank um, what else we got ignore the label in bridal dresses they bear no resemblance to normal fashion um, I had to choose my wedding dress in a size 14 even though I was only a size 10 um, so yeah just ignore that just go with what fits don't get all uppity that you know oh, I'm not wearing this it's a size 14 um, they bear no resemblance just ignore that um, and also actually if they're American sizes then the sizes are all out anyway uh, don't leave dress shopping too late um, you're gonna need at least six months if you're having a wedding dress made to measure um, so make sure you order it in plenty of time because it can take six months to arrive um, if you are on a budget and you have seen a designer dress you like 
check out pre-loved sites because you never know what you'll find. Um, a lot of people will be selling their designer dresses um, at you know, third or half the price. Um, when I was looking for my dress, this is my dress, um, <laughs> Um, I actually found it on um, a pre-loved wedding site and the person was selling, I think she bought it new for £1,200 um, and she was selling it for £800 um, and I was going to get it but then my mother-in-law, future mother-in-law, had said, oh I've seen a dress very similar in a shop in Barnsley. So of all places I went down to this tiny little boutique shop in the middle of Barnsley um, and found the same dress in there. And they were selling it for £775 new. And I was like, how is that possible? You know, it's an Ian Stewart dress. But there it was. So I could buy it new. I could buy it made to measure. So it was the perfect fit for me. Um, which works out well. Um, but I will say that I bought my wedding dress end of 2002. So this was before Ian Stewart started winning all his designer bridal wear designer of the year awards which he started winning from 2004 so I think his price has skyrocketed <laughs> from the mid noughties so um, yeah this is uh, I don't know is it almost vintage if it's uh, 17 years old I don't know <laughs> um, one thing I have noticed um, doing a lot of weddings um, and it happened to me as well um, brides don't know or can't remember how to hitch their dress up on an evening and there's been many a time seeing you know a mother-in-law or a bridesmaid with a head up a skirt trying to find the specific little loop and hook that you hook the back of the dress up on so you can move around and dance so try and remember where that is <laughs> because you'll need that on the day um, what else I want to think about wedding dresses yeah, something I've mentioned before um, about decisions, and this is about, I know it can be hard to choose a dress and you are thinking, oh, I really like bits of this one, I really like bits of this one, which one do I go for? But I think you really need to make that decision yourself. You shouldn't outsource that decision to other people because it's not their wedding day. They're not the one in the dress. And actually a lot of the people that if you do that on Facebook and you go on and go, do you want this dress or this dress? Which one does everyone prefer? None of those people are going to be at your wedding. So don't dress for them. <laughs> In fact, you only dress for yourself or you can dress to wear something nice that your partner's going to like. Um, that's it. So try and use your intuition. Try and just take some deep breaths. Try and think about dresses. Don't rush into the decision. Your dress isn't going to suddenly disappear. Um, take that time to think through and picture you wearing the dress on your wedding day. And if you start visualising your wedding day and start picturing what it is you're wearing, and you might find you can picture yourself in a particular dress, and then that'll be the one that you need to pick. Um, much better than picking a dress because, you know, a hundred people on Facebook preferred A over B because you know it's your decision so yes see that's what I like I want to inspire brides-to-be to make their own decisions um, and not outsource decisions to strangers it's all about empowerment ladies you're empowered to be confident and know your own mind um, so yes now bridesmaids about bridesmaids so the bridesmaids dresses are the next most of, most important um, so if you've chosen your bridal gown you need bridesmaids dresses to complement um, and flatter the bridal dress look so what's your overall vision for your bridesmaids are you picturing them all in identical dresses do you see them all wearing the same dress but in different colors um, all the same color but different styles um, you got to think about the season, heavy long dresses in the summer might be a bit awkward, but little short dresses with no cover up are going to be a bit cold in the winter and you can have lots of lovely wedding photos where all the bridesmaids are like this because they're so gold. And I wish somebody had told me when I was a bridesmaid for my friend, um, will you just drop your shoulders because I think in all the photos because it was cold, I'm like this. Uh. <laughs> so try and relax even if it is cold look like it's not like models do when they're 
filming beachwear in the winter with a nice blue sky. Um, so yeah, so think about the dresses and how they suit your bridesmaids as well because they've got to feel comfortable in the dress as well um, and not every style will flatter the bridesmaids because they're all different shapes and sizes and heights. Um, so sometimes it's nice to get a colour theme and then pick a, style, pick a couple of styles that suit between them. Um, again, if you're choosing dresses, make sure you give plenty of time in case alterations are required. Set a budget for the dresses. Um, if bridesmaids are contributing to their outfits, make sure you know what they can all afford. Um, look at different styles. As I mentioned, your bridesmaids might be different heights, body shapes and suit different styles. Um, you could have mismatched dresses in different colours or matching colours. Um, but if you've only got the one bridesmaid, then you don't have to worry about this. So when I got married, it was the year Moulin Rouge was, well, I think that came out in 2002. So when I was looking for dresses, I um, don't know if you've seen Moulin Rouge and Nicole Kidman's character wears that gorgeous red dress with the big thing at the back and she's just absolutely stunning and I was like I want that wedding I want that as my wedding dress I was going to have the big red dress um and then I just I don't know I couldn't make the colours work and I thought if I'm in red what colour do I put the bridesmaids in um you know would she end up having to wear ivory and then would everyone get confused as to who was the bride and who was the bridesmaid so I wore ivory and she wore a gorgeous red dress and I was very jealous <laughs> So yeah, she was very lucky in the, red, in the red dress. Yeah, it's nice to arrange a nice shopping day, get your bridesmaids together, all go out, try on dresses, use this time to just find what suits, don't put any pressure on, just try things on, because you don't know what's gonna suit. Um, and also if you go at sales time, you can actually find quite a lot. If you go in, um, in January, you can pick up dresses for a bargain, especially if you go to quiz. Quiz always seems to have hundreds of bridesmaid style dresses that next to nothing. Um, yeah, and just have fun and a few drinks. Um, and if not all, if all your bridesmaids don't all know each other, because sometimes you've got different groups of friends or family and friends, and it's a great way for everyone to get together and bond. Think about finishing touches, shoes, bags, jewelry, hair, makeup. It's kind of a nice idea to give jewelry to your bridesmaids as a gift on the morning of the wedding, um, so that they've got they've got that to wear. Um, Again, have a group fitting once you've got everything and you can see, all see the completed look with everybody in their dresses, which is lovely. Try to avoid any bridezilla moments. <laughs> what if, and this has happened with somebody, um, one of the bridesmaids announces they're pregnant. Um, so by the time of the wedding, they're either just given birth or they are still pregnant. So you need to make sure you factor this into your dress, into the dress style. Um, Empire line dresses are a good choice and can accommodate a growing bump. Um, so just speak to your bridesmaid and find out what's comfortable for them. Um, and on no accounts, accuse the bridesmaid of intentionally ruining your wedding. <laughs> okay? <laughs> or drop her from being a, being a bridesmaid. Don't do that. That's brides and bridesmaids. Um, I was going to talk briefly about the groom. Um, because they have to look nice as well. Um, so there's different options. They can go for um, hiring a suit. They could have a made to measure suit um, or a full, like a morning suit. Um, there's loads of different choices. And obviously, again, it depends on the time of year. So a tweed suit um, works quite well in the autumn and winter, but not appropriate if you've stated black tie so you obviously want the groom to fit in with your theme as well um i think my only stipulation with the with my husband when, they, when we were getting married was the color scheme was red and ivory so whatever suit you picked it had to have an ivory waistcoat and red cravat so yes and i sent them off with that um stipulation <laughs> um so yeah but let them get something that they're all comfortable with as well. And yeah, I mean, it's a lovely thing going out and choosing your wedding dress. It's it's so exciting. It kind of makes it all real and you just, it's, it's a very emotional time. Um, 
and there is the thing that you do need to not let emotions overtake you so you might find that people have opinions about what you're wearing or what suits you um, and sometimes they might be telling you something just because they mean well so for example you know if you're a larger bride and you're wearing a dress and you think it looks lovely from the front but you've got a ton of back fat hanging out <laughs> but the person stood behind you will be um, the bridal shop owner will tell you in a very nice way that you know maybe it needs altering or you need something a bit different um, one of your friends or your mum or your mother-in-law might say oh you can't wear that look at all your back fat um, <laughs> You never know they might and I'm not saying any of you watching have that but it, it's just something that's popped into my head um, so don't take things to heart I know it's emotional time um, they probably they are saying it in the sense that they want you to look the best that you can um, and maybe there's better ways of telling you things um, but don't react to these things um, because sometimes it's just the heat of a moment of somebody saying something um, and they might not realise that they've said something insensitive so try not to fall out with people um, if you can help it <laughs> so I hope you found that video useful um, if you want any more information you can find me on my website www.mindfulweddingcourses.com um, my social media links will be in the description um, I've got a Facebook group called the Mindful Wedding Community, which would be lovely to have you join. Um, I've got a wedding book out, I'll put links in the uh, description, and also I have a Mindful Wedding Planning Foundations course available on Udemy. So there's a lot going on, you can find out lots about me, and I also have a free wedding planning checklist that you can download, the link will be in the description. Bye for now everyone.